Does it make you a little sad when the Christmas decorations come down? I like to add just a few winter pieces to my decor to keep it from looking drab once Christmas is over. Today we are bringing you 10 winter DIYs that are quick, easy, and inexpensive. We have five new projects and a few blasts from the past. We hope that you will grab a hot drink, sit back, relax, and hopefully be inspired to create some pieces for your home. y'all it's Kay. For this project I'm going to be using a 14 inch wood round that I got in a package at Hobby Lobby. This wooden word that says hello that I got at Walmart. This ice skates ornament that I got at the Dollar Tree. Some unfinished letters that I got at Hobby Lobby. They are about one and three quarters inches tall. I got them when they were 50% off. Specifically I'm going to be spelling out the word winter. I'm going to be using some scrapbook paper from this collection that I got at Tuesday morning. Some two and a half inch wired ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. It is white with blue snowflakes that are glittered. Some two and a half inch faux fur ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. These small glittered snowflakes that I got at Hobby Lobby, I will be using a couple of them. But if you don't have these, that's no problem. You can also use the ones from the Dollar Tree and you can just paint and glitter them. Some faux leather that comes on a roll in this box at the Dollar Tree. Some blue and white striped twine. I believe mine came from Hobby Lobby. Some paper grommets that I also bought at Hobby Lobby. They are 1 8 inch size. Some acrylic paint in the color baby blue. Some chalk paint in the colors white and silver lining. A furniture repair marker in the color black my We Are Memory Keepers hole punch, and finally I will need some Mod Podge, some hot glue, and my super glue fix all adhesive from the Dollar Tree. I couldn't find any fabric that had cute blue snowflakes, so I did find this paper that had this nice blue pattern on it, but it wasn't big enough to use just one, so I'm going to trim it up on my little paper trimmer and make sure my pattern matches exactly. Use a little paper tape here on the back to reinforce it so that it stays together. And then I'll just place my wood circle on top and trace around it, oh, about seven inches in so that it goes about halfway through my circle. And once I get that done, I'm just going, of course, to cut it out with my scissors. And then, of course, you want to check your fit, and then I lay it down on my board and draw a line across the top so that I know where to come back in and paint in the baby blue acrylic paint. And once that's dry, just go in and place on a nice coat of Mod Podge because my paper's pretty thick, but I want to keep it as even as possible at first, I'll just smooth it down with my fingers, but I do come back in with my brayer and some saran wrap and place that saran wrap on top and then use my brayer to make sure everything is nice and flat and seated as well as possible. Once everything was dry, I came in with some more Mod Podge on top of my piece and then I also used Mod Podge on top of the blue as well, just giving my piece the same finish all the way throughout. For the word hello, I'm just going to come in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to paint the front and all of the edges and the little nooks and crannies in between. For the word winter, I'm going to use that silver linings chalk paint and I'm going to paint the front and the edges. I'm just placing it down on a little painter's tape to make it easier to hold it when I paint it. So for our pair of skates, I'm going to be using them as two separate pieces so I took them apart and then I took off both of the snowflakes on the boots. I just pried them apart from the boot without damaging the boot as much as possible. And then I come in with some sandpaper and just sand it as smoothly as I can. I'm going to use my We Are Memory Keepers hole punch on the 1 8 inch side. And I'm going to come in and punch holes all the way down the boot where the laces would go. You don't have to decide where it goes though because they have little tiny circles already drawn or burned in onto the wood pieces. 
And I want to make a pattern for the piece of the skates that I'm going to cover in the faux leather. And so I just used some typing paper and I'm just going to trace around it and make me a pattern for the inset of my boots. And I actually took it towards my window and it was much easier to trace. Now I'm just going to cut out my pattern. And once I did that, I made sure it would fit on that piece of my boots. And then I'm going to turn that faux leather onto the back, use a pencil, and just trace everything out. And then, of course, we'll just cut out our faux leather for our skates, make sure everything fits, and that part will be ready to go. I used my furniture repair marker in the color black to color in the heel and the little sole part of my ice skates. And then I'll paint the area that is the blades on my skates with my silver lining chalk paint by Waverly. And I decided I would go ahead and paint the area where our laces are going to go also in that same silver lining chalk paint by Waverly. Now I want to use those 1 8 inch paper grommets and I'm going to come in and place them into all the holes that we punched earlier. I'm just using a little tool to really press them down into the holes that we made. My package has a lot of color options, but I'm just going to use the silver ones to kind of go along with what we have. This just gives my skates a more realistic look. Now it's time to apply my faux leather. I'm just going to use some of that super glue fix all adhesive from the Dollar Tree, spread it out with a popsicle stick to keep it as flat as possible and just cover the surface. And then once I get everything applied, I'll just let it dry for several hours. I'm also going to use that same super glue fix all adhesive to apply some fur to the top part of my skates. I'm just using that faux fur that I got from Hobby Lobby spreading out the glue and placing it on, and that will need to dry before I come back and trim up around the edges. And in order not to cut your fur too closely, you want to cut it on the back, slip your scissors inside and cut the fabric only. You can always come back and trim up the actual fur piece. I'm going to use hot glue to attach some snowflakes right to the side of my skates, kind of like the ones that came on it in the beginning. And what are skates without lacing? So the next thing I'm going to do is take that blue and white striped twine and I'm going to glue it onto the back and then just run it in and out just like a set of shoelaces and lace up both of these skates. Don't worry, I'm not going to show you both of them. The bow is pretty simple for this piece. I'm only using one ribbon. I'm making three inch loops on each side. I did three on each side and six inch tails. I'm using my Easy Bow Maker and you just twist it each time you bring it through the pegs. And then we'll cut off the second six inch tail. I'm just going to use a zip tie and place it right around the center of our bow, pull it really tight and cut off the excess with some wire cutters. And then just a little fluffing and trim up those tails. The next thing I'm going to do is use a combination of hot glue and also my super glue fix all adhesive. And I'm going to start placing on all of the items on our wood round. I put this one skate on first and then I kind of work everything around that. You always need a hanger on the back of your wood rounds and you guys know I love to use soda can tabs. I just peel them off and I bend them in the center and use some hot glue to attach it to my piece on the back center and then I use some glue on top once the first coat has dried. To attach my bow, I'm just going to use a little hot glue and attach it to the upper right hand corner. And I just place a little snowflake there in the middle to hide the zip tie. And with that, this project is complete. I really love how it turned out. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these MDF snowflakes that I got from the Dollar Tree. This is the large one. An 18 inch floral craft ring that I got from Michaels. This was on clearance for $2 and I think they sell these all year round. A microfiber cloth that I get from the auto section at the Dollar Tree some fishing line, you only need a small piece, some Waverly chalk paint in white, some Mod Podge, 
some iridescent glitter, a chenille stem, my heavy duty stapler, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So before we do anything to our craft ring, I want to go ahead and add a chenille stem to the back that I'm gonna use for a hanger. I just center it over one of the holes and then staple it with my staple gun. Then we're gonna take a piece of our fishing line and we're gonna feed it through that hole, pull it down till it's even, and then I'm gonna tie a double knot at the base of our craft ring. Then I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue over it to hold everything in place. Now I'm going to take my microfiber towel and I fold it in thirds and then cut it into three different pieces. We will put one piece under our craft ring. I'm gonna figure out where my fishing line needs to go through. I punch a hole with my awl and then I just feed my fishing line through there. This is going to let it hang down without messing anything up. Now we'll just take some of our hot glue and we're gonna start wrapping our towel around our ring and gluing it down. Now it is too wide, that's okay. I would rather have it too wide and trim it up than not have it wide enough. Now we're gonna take the top part and I'm gonna glue down just the center in my chenille stem. Then I'm gonna take the ends and I push it through there and I'm gonna twist them together to make a loop and this is going to be the hanger for our piece and it's gonna be centered up over our snowflake. Easy peasy. Now we're just going to continue to go around our ring and glue down the other side. I want to completely cover this. I want it to look smooth and just as nice as it can. Now the back isn't going to be perfect, but that's okay as long as the front looks as smooth as possible. When you start to add your second piece and your third piece to this, you want to make sure that you cut off those ends that have the stitching on it. This is going to help you make your ends blend together more you are still going to kind of see that seam but it's not too bad i think it actually ends up looking really pretty you just kind of fluff it up around your seam and it, it kind of blends in i end up using two and then one piece of this fiber towel now that that's finished, we're going to work on our snowflake. I want to paint it with my Waverly white chalk paint. I did give it a good coat on the front, the back, and the sides, and then set it aside to dry. It really didn't need a second coat. The first coat covered it well. Once my paint was completely dry, I'm going to come back and I'm going to paint on some of my Mod Podge. Then I pour my iridescent glitter over this and y'all, it just takes it to the next level. It makes it look shimmery and shiny. It is so beautiful. I love how this iridescent glitter looked on this, almost like a real snowflake. Now, I know some of you do not like the glitter and if you're worried about it getting off, once your Mod Podge dries, you can spray it with a clear sealant. That'll help hold it on. Or I've even heard that hairspray works well too, but but I didn't have any issues with it. Now that everything is set, I'm going to take my ring, I put it face down, I put my snowflake in the center and put it face down as well. Then we're going to take our fishing line and we're gonna feed it through that hole there at the top. I get it as close to the center as I can and then I'm going to tie a double knot at the back, trying to keep the knot at the back of my snowflake. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to use some hot glue to hold it in place. And then I took a scrap piece of that towel and glued over it. And this is just going to help hold it so that it won't slip. Now we're going to trim everything up. And once we do that, this project is complete. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We upload videos three days per week, offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you'll like with Crafting Cousins.
Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be making a winter wreath to go on my front door, and I'm going to be using one of these 18-inch grapevine wreaths that I got at Joann's recently for $3.34. I'm also going to be using these snowflakes that came in a package from Hobby Lobby, some 2.5-inch wired ribbon that I got at Michael's, this 2.5-inch wired ribbon that I got at the Dollar General with snowflakes on it for $5, also some one and a half inch wired ribbon with snowflakes on it that I ordered on Amazon and I need a chenille stem and a zip tie. I have some floral stems that look like icicles. I got them at Hobby Lobby. And also these floral stems that I got from Hobby Lobby that have a green base but with a white coating around the sides and edges. Some white Waverly chalk paint and a foam brush. My easy bow maker to make a bow. You need some floral wire and some wire cutters. I believe this is 26 gauge. And finally, my hot glue gun and my glue pot. So I'm going to be changing this wreath up and I want it to be kind of a weathered white look. That's why I'm using some very watered down Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I don't want it to be a solid white. I want some of the wood to show through. So I wipe it on and with my foam brush and then I just wipe some off with a paper towel. And then I do let it dry overnight because it can be thick in some areas. So to make the bow, I'm going to start out first of all with the two and a half inch burlap colored ribbon. It is wired and I'm going to do four inch loops on each side and eight inch tails. And I'm going to do two loops on each side. For the second ribbon, I'm coming in with a two and a half inch snowflake ribbon and I'm just doing one loop on each side a little smaller than the one on the bottom and for the third ribbon I'm going to make those loops smaller and again doing two on each side for that one and a half inch ribbon. Then I'm using a zip tie. I'm going to wrap it around my bow, pull it to the back, place in a chenille stem before I pull it tight and then we'll cut it off with our wire cutters. Then, of course, we need to fluff it. Every bow needs a lot of fluffing. You need to dovetail the ends. I want to make sure my bottom streamers are longer than the ones on top of it and work my way to the top. And then you just have to decide where you want it on your wreath. I want it on the middle of the side of my wreath, and I just push those chenille stems down through the wreath form, pull them to the back, twist them together, and secure it with hot glue. For your florals, you want to separate them just like regular florals. There were three of these pieces on each stem, and I'm going to be using my glue pot, as I told you earlier. Mine is by Grace Monroe. And I'm going to separate those second set of florals as well, the ones that look like icicles, and I trim them down just a little bit. And now we're ready to start placing them in the wreath. I'm just going to dip them in my glue pot and secure them down by sticking them down into that grapevine wreath really well. And I'm just dividing them, placing three of the green wreath on the bottom, then the other three on the top. And then I do the same thing with my icicles and place them in. It's just a matter of poking posies and putting them where you want them to go. For the snowflakes, I'm going to take some floral wire and wire it right through the middle. This is 26 gauge floral wire. And then I'll secure them with a little glue right in the center to make sure that wire stays in place using the little stick that came with my glue pot. And then I just wired them in three on the bottom and two on the top. I sort of staggered to the right and the left, just what looked pleasing to the eye. And with that, the project is pretty much complete. This was a really simple wreath, but I think it makes a lot of punch on my front door for the month of January. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this Let It Snow wood sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. One of these little snowmen that I got from Hobby Lobby. They are 90% off now, so I paid a dollar and 30 cent for them. One of these wood boards from the Dollar Tree. You could also just use scrap wood. Some Waverly chalk paint in ink and white some Mod Podge and some iridescent glitter, some tape and some spackling from Dollar Tree, 
some of these little wood blocks from Dollar Tree, an Arteza white gel pen, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So we're gonna start off by painting our sign and our base. But before we paint the sign, I need to fill in that little hole that they put at the top. And I found the best way to do this is to put a piece of tape on the back and then fill it in with spackling and let it dry. Now I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint and paint my base and my sign. I did decide to give this base a coat of the ink. This is just going to help cover up the words and the design that's on the front of it so that it doesn't take so many coats of the white to cover it up. That's just a personal preference. Then I'm also going to paint the lettering on my sign. I paint the front, the back, and the sides. And I did try to leave the snowflake without any paint on it because because we're going to do it white. Now that our paint is dry, we will come back with our Waverly chalk paint in white, and I give the base of this a coat and a half. All that means is I painted it with one coat, let it dry, and then touched it up. There was still maybe a drop or two that was wet, and you can see that it came through, but I touched that up with the second coat. On my snowflake, I come back in with a smaller brush and I paint it and I had the same issue there. I touched a little bit of paint that had not dried well, but once this coat dried, I just came in and touched it up as well. Now we'll set this aside and let it dry. Now that all of our paint is dry, I decided that I wanted to give my sign a little bit of character. It looks good the way it is. I love the black and the white together, but I thought it just needed something extra. So I'm gonna come back in with one of my Waverly white gel pens, and I'm gonna give it some stitch marks all around the letters. Now, if you don't have one of these pens, you can do this with a small brush and some paint. I just like the control that I get from the pens, and they really aren't that expensive, and they last forever if you ever do buy any of these. Now, once we get all of our stitching done, look how cute this makes the sign. I just think that it gives it something extra and it's all about the details. Now I'm gonna figure out how many of those little blocks that I need. And I did see that only three places were actually going to touch. So we're gonna take three of those blocks and I'm going to paint them with my white Waverly chalk paint. I want this to kind of look like maybe snow build up behind the letters instead of it just being so obvious that we use the wood blocks to hold it up. While that's drying, I'm gonna come back and I want to give my snowflake a little more character. Y'all know me, I love to judge things up. So I'm painting on some Mod Podge to my snowflake and then I pour my iridescent glitter over it and shake off the excess. There were a few little areas that I missed so I just go in and touch those up and we have a beautiful snowflake. Now that everything is finished, we can start putting it together. I'm gonna take those little wood blocks and I use a little bit of hot glue and glue it to it. And then I stand it up on my base just to make sure that it's pushed down and that it's going to touch and my sign is going to sit flat. Once we get those glued on the back, I'll turn it around and use a little bit of glue on the bottom of these and then stick it down and we have a cute little sign. Now I'm going to take one of these little snowmen that I got from Hobby Lobby. I think they are so cute and neutral. I did glue down the scarf ends because they were sticking out and I had to trim up the base to make it flat. And then I just used some hot glue and glue it down to the base of our sign. Now our sign was a little long. I could have cut it off, but we have the power turned off at the shed. So I decided to just give the whole thing a good coat of snow <laughs> and make it look like it all belonged instead of worrying about cutting it off. So all I'm going to do is take my Mod Podge, I paint it onto the bottom of my sign, I also make sure I paint it onto those little blocks and then I cover it with glitter, shake off the excess and once we finish this, this project will be complete.
Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this gift, I'm going to be making some string art. Friend of mine is really into string art and she wanted this piece. This is a scrap piece of 5 8 inch plywood and it's about 8 inches by 8 inches. I'm going to use this small piece of burlap, this snowflake pattern that I found on the internet for free, some metallic white embroidery thread, some one and a half inch nails, and my hammer, and finally, some Mod Podge. The first thing I'm going to do is apply a very generous coat of Mod Podge. This burlap fabric is very thick, and it will take quite a bit of the Mod Podge. Then I just smooth out my fabric, keeping it as straight as possible onto my board. And now I'm coming back in with a top coat of Mod Podge. Don't worry, it dries completely clear. But I told you this fabric is thick and it needs this added glue. And now that it's dry, I'm going to go in and cut off all of the excess. And now I'm laying out my snowflake pattern and I'm going to use a little tape to keep it perfectly in place. And the next thing we're going to do is start hammering in those nails. I'm going to put nails at every intersection and every end of every line. And now we can carefully start to remove our pattern I want to keep it intact as much as I can so I can refer back to it as I'm working my pattern across with my embroidery thread. The first thing I'm going to do is tie a knot around the center nail. We're going to work out from the center each time when we do a line of the snowflake. You want to go in and out and around each nail. You have to keep in mind how the pattern is going to look, but also how you can connect each time. So you work down one line and then back to the center, getting the sides as you go. So straight down a line, and then as you work your way back, you get all of the small pieces. And that's how we work around the snowflake. It just takes a little practice. And you can see that I took some off and then I started again. And then when you finish, you just tie it right back in the center. and cut off the thread. I love how this turned out so much. Kind of a rustic snowflake. I think it's going to look perfect on her mantle for January. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this old piece of wood that I found beside the road. I think someone dismantled a fence and there were pieces of this piled up and of course I had to grab some. I love how rustic it is and these raw edges, all I did was clean it up. Some of these wooden snowflakes, some super glue wood glue from the Dollar Tree and my glue gun and some glue sticks. Now this is going to be a super simple project. I love these kind of projects. I did cut my snowflakes using my laser that I got, 
but I wanted to show you that they do sell these snowflakes at the Dollar Tree and I think it would be just as pretty to use those. Now all we're going to do is set our snowflakes out and line them up on our board and then we're going to use our wood glue and attach them to it. Now I've decided to use a paintbrush and just paint the wood glue on the back. This helped minimize some of the gooping that it did on these small pieces. I did still have a little bit and I had to come in with a brush and kind of clean it up some, but it was minimalized and I was able to attach these easily. Now you may have noticed that on the thicker pieces, I do use just a little bit of hot glue. This is going to help it stick to our board until our wood glue sets and bonds it to it. I'm just going to continue to do this all the way up my board and attach these snowflakes. Now, I love these kind of projects. I don't do a lot of decorating in my home for the winter. Once I take down my Christmas decorations, I just like to leave out a few pieces that are kind of neutral and just give me the sense of having winter in my home without using heavy decorations. And this kind of project is my favorite. I love these neutral pieces. I did think about painting my snowflakes white, but I love the way this raw wood looks against this old beat up wood and I decided to just kind of leave them the way they are. I love the simplicity behind it. I am also not adding a hanger to this. I'm just going to stand it up on a shelf and let it be a leaner, but if you prefer to hang it, you can easily add a hanger to this, and once you get your snowflakes attached, this piece is ready to add into your decor. Hey y'all, it's Kay. So today I'm going to be making some winter decor for my home. As you know, I just moved and I have nothing here. I'm going to be using one of these wood rounds that I got from Hobby Lobby. This inspiration ribbon, it's kind of a burlap background with a beautiful blue snowflake on it. It is wired, but I'm going to be taking that out for part of the craft. And I'm also going to be using a bit of this wired ribbon that's also two and a half inches and looks very much like burlap. I'm going to be using my go-to gel stain that I got at Hobby Lobby, some Waverly chalk paint in the color Lagoon, and some Waverly chalk paint in the color Plaster. This word that I got at Hobby Lobby, it says hello, it's a thick plastic and it was in the paper department. These wooden letters that I got at the Dollar Tree, one of these wooden snowflakes that I got at Hobby Lobby, they come in a package that contains several. One of these paper brads from Hobby Lobby that is shaped like a snowflake. And finally, some E6000 and also my hot glue gun. So the first thing I did was take my pencil and I just drew a line right down the middle of my board. And I'm just going to use a baby wipe and stain one half of my wood round, making sure that I also get the outside edges. Then I'm just going to paint the bottom half in the Blue Lagoon chalk paint by Waverly. I chose this color because it was the closest to the blue in the ribbon. I'm just going to measure out a piece that's a little larger than my board, and I'm going to take out the wire that's in the top and the bottom of the ribbon, use a little hot glue to attach it down onto my board, and you notice I'm covering up more of the stain side than I am the blue side. And then I'll tuck it around the back, making sure I get glue on the edges and smooth that down with my finger protector. And then once I've accomplished that, I'm just going to cut off a little bit of the excess there. And at this point is when I decided that I would paint my letters that spell winter in the Waverly chalk paint. The color is plaster. To further dress up the top of my wood round, I'm going to make a very simple bow. I'm going to cut two pieces of this ribbon at about seven inches each and I dovetailed the ends, and then I'm coming back with the solid ribbon, and I'm going to cut them at about six inches each and dovetail the ends. Then I'm going to place them on a diagonal, pinch them in the middle, and then I'll just tie a bit of this jute rope right here in the middle and secure it with some hot glue. Just keeping it really simple for this decor piece. To make a hanger for the back, I'm going to place one of these pop tops from a soda can right in the center with some hot glue. 
Then I'm going to decide where to place my word winter and then come in and carefully watch my spacing and glue it down with some E6000. I didn't use hot glue to attach it to this piece, although you could. I wanted to have some extra drying time so I could slide my letters around and get them perfectly spaced. I'm going to use hot glue to attach the word hello kind of towards the top. And this is the time I should tell you that I kind of regret not moving it down about a half an inch closer to the word winter. But once I got it attached, it was a little too late for that. So maybe if you make one, you can remember and watch your spacing on the word hello. And at this point, I'm going to attach the bow just using again hot glue and securing it on the diagonal to the left. I'm going to take the little paper brad and twist down the little prongs on the back and then take some glue and secure it to the middle of the bow just to dress it up a little bit. And then we'll take our wooden snowflake here at the bottom and attach it with hot glue as well. And that's pretty much it for this project. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this little wooden cutout gnome that I got from the Dollar Tree. I think it is so cute. It even has its own stand. And I do know that it's probably more for Christmas, but we're going to make him a winter gnome. Some of this faux fur that I had left over from other projects. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. Some of this jacket, I got this from Goodwill Outlet, and I love the fabric. I love to be able to repurpose pieces like this so they don't go to the landfill. Some Waverly chalk paint in white and ink, and some acrylic paint in beachcomber beige, and I end up using a little brown. Some faux snow from Dollar Tree. Some of these foam vase filler balls from Dollar Tree a wooden snowflake sticker from Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I wanted to do was make a pattern for his hat and his beard before I start painting him. Now I did put my laptop under there. Because of the little stand, this doesn't lay flat. And then I just laid a piece of paper on there. I traced around his hat. Then I laid the paper on top of him. And you see I'm just kind of filling around and tracing around his beard. Now this did not have to be perfect. I wasn't worried about it being perfect. I just wanted some cut lines for when I start to cut that faux fur to help me be able to kind of get the beard shape. So I drew around this and cut it out. Now, before I start painting him, I wanted to take that little star off. I know my fabric is going to cover it, but I didn't want to leave that bump there. And, you know, I'll use it in another project. Now, I'm just going to take my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, and I'm going to paint his pants. I thought that black pants would go perfectly with his little cheetah print hat. So, I'm just kind of using a small brush and going right there around those edges. I didn't tape it off because I wasn't real worried about getting paint on anything else. I'm going to be kind of covering it, but I was as careful as I could be. Now I am going to use my beachcomber beige and paint his nose, but I thought it was a little too light, so I grabbed some brown paint and kind of mixed the two together while they were wet until I liked the color. Then we'll lay them aside to dry. Now I'm going to take my little beard and trace it onto the back of my faux fur. And I know you see those lines there where I had started tracing it before, but I had laid it down and then I realized that I needed to have it backwards so that when I put it on there, it would be right. So I flipped it over and used a pen and traced around it. Then I'm just gonna use my scissors and trim it out. Now again, this does not have to be perfect. With it being fur, it's gonna be forgiving. Once I get this cut out and trimmed up just a little bit, I'm going to use some hot glue right there where his beard is, and then I will glue that fur piece down right on top of it, and I'll trim off any little pieces that are hanging off. Now for his hat, I'm going to use a piece of the sleeve off this little jacket. I opened it up so that it would be easier to do, and then I'm gonna lay my pattern piece on there and just trim around it. Now I'm leaving that um, hem down there at the end because I thought that would make the perfect brim on our little hat. 
Once I got it cut out, I'm just going to take some hot glue, glue it there on his hat, and then we're going to put the fabric on and kind of bunch it up around his nose so that it looks like it's sitting on top of it. Now for this little star, I started to leave it just the plain wood, but then I decided to paint it white, so I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint, and while it was still wet, I just sprinkled a little bit of iridescent glitter on top of it that I had on hand. Now I'm going to take some hot glue, and I decided to glue it right there to his hat. I thought that was cute. Now I'm going to use some Mod Podge, and I paint it around the base there and then I just kind of dip it into that faux snow so that it sticks to it. I want it to look like he's sanding in snow. Now if you don't have any Mod Podge you could totally use glitter here. Just use whichever one you have on hand. Now I'm going to take three of those little foam vase filler balls and I'm just going to glue them right there on the stand at his feet so that it looks like he's got some snowballs laying there ready to toss at someone. Once we get these on here this project will be finished. y'all it's Kay. Let's make a winter wreath for some winter door decor and I'm going to use this loop it yarn that I got at Hobby Lobby. You will need about one and a half rolls. I'm going to use one of these styrofoam wreath forms that I got at the Dollar Tree. Some ribbon. I'm going to use the burlap for January and then I'll use one of these heart ribbons for February. And finally, I'm going to use some zip ties, some chenille stems, my hot glue gun, and some scissors. The first thing I'm going to do is take the end of my yarn, use a little hot glue to attach one of the loops at the end to the wreath form, and just hold that down till it attaches well. And then I'm going to start working my way around the wreath form, repeatedly turning it, making sure I keep my loops to the outside, and then I want to push everything as close together as possible because I don't want any of the green showing. And then I just work my way around the wreath form. I love this loopy yarn. It was so popular during December, I almost couldn't find it. It has a nice fluffy feel, which reminds me of snow. Ever so often, I stop and put a little glue just to make sure it stays in place, and then I'm constantly checking to make sure no green is showing. The first roll of yarn covered about two-thirds of my wreath form. And then I had to go to the store and buy the second roll. But it's nice and fluffy, so we just start over and finish out the wreath. And when I get close to the end, I'm just going to cut off about six or eight inches and then work my way down to the form and find a spot to glue it on. And there it is. And now I'm going to take my burlap ribbon and I'm just going to make a simple bow by pinching it in the middle and I'm going to tie a zip tie around it. But before I pull it tight, I'm going to put my chenille stem through the back. And then I'll just use my wire cutters and cut that off. And then finally, I'll even out my tails, fluff my bow, and dovetail the end. And now I'm going to take a piece of the burlap ribbon, fold it in thirds, and then wrap it right around the middle to hide my zip tie. Then I'll just glue it on the back as well.
Everything's wrapped nice and looks professional, and I'll cut off the excess. And there it is. But I couldn't leave it alone. I had some of these snowflakes that I got at Hobby Lobby when they were marked 66% off. So I just glued one right there in the center. And then I'm using the chenille stem to attach it to my wreath. And now let's do our February look. Same thing, I decided to use this sheer and red glitter heart ribbon, make a simple bow, and cut that off. Dovetail the ends. And then I'm going to put a little heart right there in the center. Something I pulled from my stash and then attach it to the wreath form. There's my January look. I love using items that I can use more than one month by just changing out the ribbon. And there's my February look. I can't wait to hang this on my door. For this project, we're going to use one of these little wood planks from the Dollar Tree. I had already cut a piece off of this one for another project, but that's fine because this is actually a little longer than I want, so it'll work out. We're going to use some of these wooden letters from Dollar General. I've already taken out the ones that I need. We're going to use an S and a W and an N, but mine didn't have any N, so we're going to actually use a Z on its side. We're going to use one of these snowflakes from the Dollar Tree. This lettering that I printed out from the computer, but you can do it freehand. Some Waverly chalk paint in ink and white. And I'm showing you a graphic illustration pen, but I actually used a white gel pen and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint that little wood plank with my ink color and I do paint the front the back and those little sides I just like for my projects to have a really finished look and then we're going to paint our little letters now for the letters I am using the white in the Waverly chalk paint and I'm only painting the top and the sides of these because we'll glue them down so you won't see the back now I want to put my lettering on there. I just scribble on the back of it with a pencil, lay it on my project, and trace over it, and it's going to give me a really faint outline. Now I can see it to fill it in, so then I take my Waverly um, gel pen. This is one of those white gel pens, and I fill it in. Now again, you can totally do this freehand. Now I'm going to lay my lettering out so that I can figure out how I want it to look. And then we're going to figure out which size of snowflake that we need. I'll press my snowflake down and then we're just going to use a little bit of hot glue on the back of our letters and glue those into place. And once we do that, this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use this little block that I got from Goodwill. I love picking these up anytime that I see them. And we're going to use a couple of these little wooden mitten stickers from the Dollar Tree. We'll use some Waverly chalk paint. I only end up using the ink. A Arteza white gel pen. Some of this sweater that I have been using for other projects all through the season and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I did was take my heat gun and try to remove this paper from the front of this. Now I found out I really didn't have to do that because it had a thick coat of Mod Podge on it, but I wasn't sure about that and I didn't want it to buckle, so I did clean as much of it off as I could. Then I took my Waverly chalk paint in ink and we're going to completely cover our block. I do paint the front, the back, and all the sides because I like for my projects to look the same all over. And then we're going to leave it to dry. 
Now we're going to work on those little mittens. I always take those little stickers off the back. That's just me. And I'm going to take part of this sweater and cover it. I decided I wanted to use that ribbed edge there on the edge of the glove. I think it'll make it look more finished. So I just take a little bit of hot glue and I put it all over my glove and then I press it down so that I have the top part in the edge of that sweater. Now on this next one, notice that I'm putting it the same way. I shouldn't have done that. I should have flipped it. So I end up having to do another one after this. But you know, you live and you learn. Once we get these glued down, we're just going to take our scissors and trim it out. And then we're going to have two adorable little mittens. Now I'm going to take that block and I'm going to use my Arteza white gel pen and write burr on it. I did trace my letters out with a pencil first just so that I would have my dimensions and know where I wanted them to be placed. Um, but you don't have to do that. I've just found that it's easier to change it if you have to, if you do it in pencil first. Now we'll place our mittens down and I decided to take a little piece of yarn just to connect my mittens. So I glue one end to the back of one and then I will figure out how long I want it and glue the other end and trim that off. Then we will attach these to our block with some hot glue. And once we do that, this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use a salt shaker. I got mine from the thrift store and one of these wooden knobs that I got from Joann Fabrics. Some faux snow, some leftover greenery, some ribbon of choice, this came from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in ink and white, some Waverly chalk paint in pumpkin, the very end of this little skewer, my permanent black markers, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing we're going to do is our painting so that it can dry. I'm painting my little wooden bead with my white chalk paint. Now, if you don't have one of these wooden knobs, you could use a bead. I know it has a hole all the way through it, but your hat should cover that. Then we're going to take the top of our salt shaker and we are going to paint it with our Waverly chalk paint in ink and leave it to dry. I'm going to use my scissors and cut off just the end of this skewer so it can be my nose and then I'm going to paint it with my pumpkin chalk paint. It was a little tedious but we got it done. Now I'm going to take my awl that I got from Hobby Lobby in the fabric department and I'm just going to punch a little hole right there in the front that I can put the nose in. I like this awl because it will punch holes in all kinds of materials. Now we'll put a little hot glue on there and then glue our nose to the front. I'm going to hold my hat in place so I can see how I need to do his little face and use my permanent marker and draw in a couple of eyes and then use some dots to make a mouth on here. Now I'll take that um, faux snow and I'm just going to pour some into my salt shaker. You put as much or as little as you would like and then I'm going to cut up a little bit of this frosted greenery and drop in there on top of it. We'll use a little bit of hot glue right around the edge of our salt shaker and glue our head on and then we're going to use our hot glue to glue our hat on kind of at an angle. Give him a little bit of a jaunty look. I'm going to take some ribbon, I'll trim that off, and then I'm just going to tie it right there around his neck to give him a little scarf. I'm going to tie it in a double knot, and then I'll trim it off, and this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use some Waverly chalk paint in ink, one of these wooden tags from the Dollar General, one of these sparkly glitter stickers from the Dollar Tree, and a little bit of black and white baker's twine. The first thing we're going to do is paint our little wooden tag. I paint the front, the back, and the sides with my ink chalk paint and leave it to dry. This one is going to be so simple as most of these are. It's just something cute that you can use as filler on your trays. Once this is dry, we're going to cut off a little piece of our baker's twine. I'm going to fold it in half and then feed it through my little hole. We'll take the ends and feed it through the loop that it made and pull it tight. I'm going to put just a little bit of hot glue there at the base and this is going to help it hold so it doesn't come loose. Then we're going to trim it up. 
The last thing we have to do is decide which one of our snowflakes we want to use, stick it down, and this project will be finished. For this project, you're going to need some wooden beads, some yarn, one of those wooden snowflake ornaments from Dollar Tree, some Waverly white chalk paint, and a black permanent marker. The first thing I'm going to do is paint my little ornament from the Dollar Tree. I'm using my Waverly white chalk paint and I gave it a really good coat on the front and the back. And then I took my brush and just kind of dabbed down in between those edges. I was trying to cover it as much as I could and I left it to dry. When I started taking out my beads, I realized that I was going to need a couple of larger beads to form a snowman. So I grabbed four beads that were about a size bigger in some unfinished beads. I put them on a skewer and then I'm going to use my Waverly white chalk paint and paint them. I only end up using two of these though. While that is drying, I'm going to make my tassel. I took a little book and I wrapped my yarn around it about 30 times. Now, I'm using a size that I thought would make a good tassel. You use whatever works for you. I'm going to cut off a little piece of yarn and lay it to the side. And then I take the tail of my yarn and I run it up under what I had wrapped on the book. I pull it to the top, tie it into a double knot, and slip it off my book. Now I'm going to take that little piece of yarn that we cut off and I'm going to wrap it around the top of this about six or seven times and tie it into a double knot. This is going to give me the top of my tassel. I'll trim all that off and then we're going to cut open those little loops at the bottom and I'm going to trim it down. You make it however long you want your tassel to be. I'll cut off a long piece of my yarn. You'd rather have too much than not enough. And then I'm just going to thread it into a darning needle to make it easier to put my beads on. I put on three of my little black beads. Then I'm going to put on one of those bigger white beads and then two more of my smaller white beads. That's going to give me a little snowman. I put on three more of my black beads. And then I'm going to start a pattern of doing white, black, white, black. You do this for as long as you want your garland to be. I think I used about 18 beads in this, but you use whatever works best for you. Once I got it as long as I wanted it, I put on three more of my black beads. Then I'm going to put on two of my smaller white beads and one of my larger white beads. And then I'll put on three more black beads. And that's my garland. Now we're going to thread that little ornament onto the end of this and tie it into a knot so that it will hold it. And that's going to be the end of our garland there. I think I tied like three knots in there just to make sure that it didn't come off. We'll trim off our thread and that will be it. Now I'm going to take those little beads we put on there and I'm going to decorate them to be a snowman. I grabbed a orange um, colored pencil that I had and drew in a little nose. Then I used my permanent marker and I made a couple of little eyes and a dotted mouth. I put three little dots in the center one for some buttons. And then I decided that I probably should glue these together so that his head doesn't twist around to the back of his body. Now I'm going to take a little piece of baker's twine and I decided he needed a scarf. So I just tie that around his little neck and then I thought, yep, probably need to glue that too. So I put a little more glue there and then we're going to trim those ends off and he's going to have a cute little scarf. I love that little snowman. We're going to flip this around and we're going to do it one more time. We're going to draw in his little nose. Then we'll take our marker, make some eyes, dot in a little mouth. We'll put three little dots for buttons. Then we're going to go ahead and glue this together. I glue those bottom two together. I glue his head to the top one. And then I cut off the twine, but I decided I probably should go ahead and glue his head to his body. That might make it easier. And then I tie the twine around there in a double knot and trim it off. And with that, this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use one of these little signs that I get from Dollar General when they're 90% off. They make great little signs for your tear trays. Some of this wording that I printed off from my computer. 
some snowflakes from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in ink, and my Arteza white gel pen. I'm going to be using the back of my sign for the front, so I take off the twine and the little sticker, then I pry up that staple that's on there and sand it down smooth. Now we're going to take our Waverly chalk paint in ink and we're going to give our sign a really good coat. I do paint the inside, the outside, the front, the back, all the sides. I always like for my projects to look the same all the way around. Now I'm going to put my wording onto my sign. I wanted to have this really pretty fancy font, so I printed it off on my computer. Then I just take a pencil and I scribble all over the back of it. I lay it onto my sign and then I trace over the letters and that transfers them onto my project. Now it is really light, but I can see it. So then I'm gonna take my Arteza white gel pen and I just fill in my lettering. Now I realize if you have a cutting machine, you can do this with a cutting machine, but we always like to show those who don't have one how they can make the same kind of projects. The last thing we're gonna do is add some snowflakes to the front of this and then this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use one of these little buckets from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in ink, some spackling from the Dollar Tree, a little bit of tape, some of these white pom-poms, a piece of this white cloth from the Dollar Tree, this little chalkboard sign from the Dollar Tree, and my white Arteza gel pen. So the first thing I want to do was fill in the little hole at the top of my sign. So I'm gonna put a piece of tape on the back and then fill it in with a little bit of my spackling and let it dry. Now I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in ink and I paint it in that little hole at the front and then I'm gonna paint the back and the sides of my sign to give it a uniform look. Now we're gonna take that cloth and cut off a little piece to stuff in our bucket. Then we will add our little pom-poms on top so that we have some snowballs in our bucket. The last thing to do is to write on our little sign. I took my Arteza white gel pen and I'm writing in snowballs five cent. And y'all, I even freehanded this. I know that it surprises you. <laughs> but once we get that wrote in, this little project is finished. For this project, we're going to use some of these little wooden snowmen shape from Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in white and ink, a black permanent marker, and some black and white baker's twine. So the first thing we're gonna do is paint the bottom part of our little shapes here with our white Waverly chalk paint and let them dry. Now again, this is one of those really simple projects that you don't have to do much to, but make adorable fillers for your tear tray. Once we get the bottom painted with the white, we're gonna take our Waverly chalk paint in ink and we're gonna paint the top of each one of these and then we'll set them aside and let them completely dry. Yeah, I was trying really hard not to get the black paint onto the white snowman. Now that they're dry, I'm gonna take my permanent marker and I put two little eyes and a little dotted mouth on the top and then three little buttons on each belly of my snowman. Then I'm going to take an orange colored pencil and draw in a little nose. And the last thing we're going to do is take some of our baker's twine and tie it right around his neck into a little knot, trim it off to give him a scarf. Once we get all three of these done, this simple little project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use one of these little foam styrofoam trees from Hobby Lobby, a piece of this fabric from the automotive department at the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So when I was looking at my tray, it had a little area that needed something. So I decided to use one of these little foam trees and cut off the bottom so it wouldn't be too tall. 
Then I'm going to cut a little piece of this fabric that I get from the automotive section at the Dollar Tree. And we're just going to glue it around this. Now, y'all, I could have made this a lot easier on myself if I would have made a pattern first. But I was being stubborn and wanted to hurry. So I just end up cutting it up you know i'll cut pieces off i glue it down i wrap it some more until it completely fits around there this fabric is really forgiving so you don't see this seam that i'm making here at the back so i'm just going to keep cutting it and gluing until i have a little snow covered cone tree to fit on my tray once you get this glued down the way you like it this simple little project is finished Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye y'all!